guys for the section, so uh, we're going to do our best. It's a lot to go over today, so sorry about what we as a man, the man of the Baptist Church family, all of our sisters, Sister Sister Rochelle, and family, and Johnson, and we're going to pass away, and Sister Georgia Johnson, her home going to the man who was going to start his day, June the 2nd. Still, our sincerest condolences. Oh, All 2002 graduates, kindergarten, elementary, middle, high school, college, postgraduate, net admission is next Sunday. Please, please, please call the church office, with email, 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 bc at bellsouth.net or text 502 592 4582 today to submit your information. We do want to recognize all of our graduates. With that being said, attention EBC College Bound Students, scholarship application deadline is July 10th. That's for the CB Lucas and we have scholarships. Both applications are available in the vestibule. Um, you want to submit, you can submit them electronically to Sister Jamal Saxon for the CB Lucas scholarship or the Wheeler scholarship can be turned into Sister Betty Wheeler. Additionally, annual community weekend, July 27th through the 31st. That's where we're going to have our Vacation Bible School, our annual Vacation Bible School, July 27th through the 29th, with the backpack giveaway on July 30th, followed by a community-wide worship service on July 31st. Please keep that in mind for the future days from July 27th through the 31st for our community-wide event. Also, church-wide outside cleanup for Vacation Bible School, it's June 18th. Um, asking that anybody in or women who would like to help assist in the cleanup parking lots uh, July 18th. Uh, several bullet points are outlined that you might want to consider on where you can help and assist. Please, please, please read the church bulletin. Whatever you can assist in doing, we greatly appreciate uh, volunteering. And this endeavor is truly well received, well accepted, and well needed. Last but not least, the Jail Robbers School of Religion is back. Amen. 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 June 27th through the 30th, it's now being held at St. Stephen Church. Um, with that being said, I'm the president of the youth department. So anybody would like to volunteer as youth workers, please let me know. Uh, please bring your youth. I know we haven't gathered in quite a while, but this is an opportunity for our young people to meet with other children raised in Christian homes to understand what God means, especially to them, and have some education along the way. So please keep in mind June 27th and 30th, Jell Roberts School of Religion at St. Stephen Church. Let us stand as we go to the good Lord. Yes, 
you are worthy to be praised. Dear the Father, we come before you right now with open hearts and eyes, for the receipt which you have for us. Lord, is it enough you take it out right now? Lord, is it give you more grace to take it out? Lord, let our hearts and minds be fixed on you. Let us read your holy word for guidance. Let us pray for that relationship that we need, Lord. Let us turn only to you for our guidance and advice. Lord, our sons and blessings, we are out there. How all the Lord be listening to me, who should be listening to you. Lord, let us be mindful that you are the one that can heal. You are the one that can deliver. You are the one that pays the bills. You are the one that does it all. And Lord, we want to be mindful and perfect of that. Lord, right now, I ask that you be with all of those on our city settlements, that you inspire them, Lord, to stay strong in the faith and encourage them to lift their spirits. Lord, let us be mindful of those in this sanctuary right now who are mentally, spiritually sick and sick, that you go by and heal their hearts and minds, Lord. Somebody who has struggles, strength in their life, Lord, ask right now that you relieve those burdens. Lord, ask that you give them the strength and the courage to hang it on and trust you with their burdens, with their problems, with their struggles, with their relationships, Lord, that we trust you in everything. And we need our own understanding for nothing because, Lord, we are fragile and the flesh fails. Lord, right now I want to ask a special prayer of the young man being baptized today, Brother Trey, that you order his steps in your word, that you be that light, Lord, that keeps his path straight, Lord, give him struggles to keep him humble, but successes to keep him moving forward. Lord, I ask right now for the edge of protection, as we know, and in this new world, the devil will be busy. That we want to make sure that this brother is encouraged and lifted and all of the Christians in his life stand strong, stand firm, and come to be out with your word and your guidance. Lord, I ask right now that you forgive us of our sins, of our shortcomings, and that we give you the praise in all that we need to do. Ask all of the sweet name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good morning. We're going to transition to our time of baptism. Um, we're going to ask not only that the candidate uh, made this way back here, but uh, any family members uh, that want to come are right up here to the baptismal pool to uh, see this, uh, take your time, make your way down here. We have plenty of room right here in uh, front of us so you can see. Uh, so we want you to come and share during this time. So if uh, any of the Smith family that wants to come down, you can come down uh, now. Uh, while they're coming, I do want to take a little time uh, to just uh, explain why we do baptism. Amen. Uh, for us to know and understand uh, what we're doing and why we're doing it. Uh, first off, when we were born, we were born in difficulty. Y'all say difficult. We were born in difficulty. The Bible says it like this, that we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. What that means is that from the day we were born, we were on a road that didn't lead to God. We don't like it, it, accepting that, saying that, but none of us want the road that led to him. I say it like this all the time. The road we were on is like sitting in a car on the water side, but desiring to go to St. Louis. On the road that we were on, no matter how efficient we drove, no matter how nice our car was, no matter what we did in the vehicle, we were on a road that did not lead to our destination. What we needed was an offering. Jesus Christ is our perfect offering that took us off of the road of destruction 
and put us on a path to righteousness for his name's sake. Now the good part about that, he says the path, we aren't the path. That means that even though we're on the path of righteousness, sometimes we make bumps in our road, difficulties in our terrain, but we're still on the path of his righteousness. This young man, Trey Smith, has made his first step in many steps on his path toward righteousness. He recognized that on the road that he was on, that he needed an off-ramp. And just like us, he said, let me off here, next exit, please. And Jesus Christ accepted really the most powerful prayer there is, which says, Jesus, I need you. None of that other stuff matters. Jesus, I need you. So you're about to witness some of his first steps in his journey to be the young man that God has called him to be. Amen. And so I want to ask you to covenant with him, uh, to pray for him, to be a part of the solution and never part of the problem, to encourage him along his way, if he should stumble, not criticize, but help up. Amen? As we all need on our journey. Amen? His family is round about him. I want to pray for them as well. Uh, as we all seek to be a solid example. Uh, as well as advocates for him as a person. Amen? He's given his life to Christ. And today, he will be baptized to announce to the world that a change has come in his life.
Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, first of all, I want to thank um, Reverend Williams for uh, running the order of service uh, last week. And um, thank for Joe Ellison for bringing the word uh, last week. I did not intend to uh, not be here. Uh, one of my friends, uh, Michael Robinson, who pastors Total Grace in Lexington, uh, he has not felt well, and uh, he was set to preach on Sunday. He had some issues. Uh, he was going to be unable to preach, and uh, it was really last minute, and uh, he needed somebody to stand for him. Uh, I've been there, and uh, as a pastor, there are times where you don't feel like you can't get sick. You don't feel like you can miss. Uh, I don't talk about this much, but I missed my grandmother's funeral because I had a funeral ready man. I only had one grandmother that I ever knew. My mom's mom died when she was five years old. And I remember that moment trying to trying to lay, you know what I mean? Trying to live between two worlds. Um, I needed a pastor. But I had a pastor while I needed a pastor. I had to console while I needed console. And so, uh, even though I didn't really have any, any uh, plans on who's going to preach here, um, I stood here for my brother. And uh, I knew we had capable hands um, all around this house who could take care of uh, Emmanuel. But I don't take that lightly. Um, and uh, I just appreciate uh, our associate ministers here uh, for standing in when we have me and uh, doing a very good job. Uh, praise God uh, for that. Uh, to Reverend Fall, who's been uh, handling Bible study the last couple weeks and done a terrific job. I hope y'all got a chance to catch those uh, Bible studies. He's been really doing uh, a really good job uh, with Bible study. Uh, I just praise God. Amen. Um, I will admit before I start that this sermon is going to be a little bit different than, I don't know if there's a normal sermon when you fool with me, but it's going to be a little bit different. Um, but I'm going to ask you to turn in your Bibles to the book of Acts. Or probably better stated, the Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 3. We're going to read just the first 10 verses. And Acts 3. Anybody know whose pen this is? This is a nice pen. I'm about to steal it. So, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to give you an opportunity. God, call it. Man, the right brand of pen. Thank, thanks, Tasha. Thought I had to do it. Amen. But, uh, no, no, you can't give Andy's pen away. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 3, where he first 10 verses. Now, if you've been around church for a little bit, uh, you probably heard this story. Uh, we're going to talk about it in a little bit different way uh, today. Acts 3, verses 1 through 10. It says, Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a man, lame from birth was being carried who they laid daily at the gate of the temple that is called the beautiful gate to make to ask all to those entering the temple seeing peter and john about to go into the temple he asked to receive alms and peter directed his gaze at him as did john 
and said, look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And leaping up, he stood and began to walk and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God and recognized him as the one who sat at the beautiful gate of the temple asking for alms. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what happened to him. Amen. This morning I'm going to preach from the topic how to deal with ugly situations. Um, Last week I preached at Total Grace Baptist Church and um, sometimes I know people have a desire to go to a Total Grace uh, but may men end up at a different Total. May end up a Total Mess or drive by Total Wine, I don't know. But either way, I do understand that no matter who you are, where you come from, no matter how many times you come to church, how much Bible you read and how much praying you do, sometimes life can catch you off guard. I ain't gonna worry about That life has shocked you, that the ran up on you, that caught you off guard, and has taken you in such a way that it knocked you off your feet. That life sometimes is like black ice that before you realize you stepped on it, you're already on the ground. And I think that what has happened in our life is that each and every one of us has gone through ugly situations in our life. When I was growing up, ugly didn't have nothing to do with your looks. Ugly, ugly was how you acted. But mom would say, don't you go in there acting. Uh, you know, I'm a fool with her. She ugly at That made you have a bad attitude, a bad disposition that you didn't want to be associated with. And I think that not in the church worldwide, we've grown accustomed to keeping ugly things out of our church. We force them outside of the temple to sit at the gate and will not allow ugly things inside the hollow wall of the church. That our attitude and demeanor has been that if it don't look righteous, don't bring it to church. And so it ain't that we are allergic to ugly things. We just want you to look like it ain't ugly. Dress it up, get it right, make it look okay. And this to these moments that we hear together. But the reality is the unfortunate thing is that we bring these ugly situations into the church mass in our uh, uh, religious piety and then leave out the same way we can be. And in this story about this lame man who every day church folks grabbed him lame, took him out of his position, sent him outside of the church every day and allowed people to give him offering and nobody gave him help. They gave him alms, but didn't give him assistance. And I just wonder, is God pleased with the way we church it? And I ain't talking about the name, I'm talking about the church at large, where the world is screaming out for help. You, me, all of us have blamed over the last Eight, ten years, every government this week of find a wise situation the way it is. It was Trump fall for a little while, it was Obama fall for a little while, now it's Biden fall. We blame Mitch McConnell and the other cat crazy one, you know, I don't know his name. What's his name? Grandpa, him. That one. But could it be that the God has been, God has been screaming to us? 
that it's never been the job of the government to take care of people. That he positioned churches throughout this land. And the reason why we have tithes and offering has not been to maintain buildings, but instead to transform people. And could it be that the problem ain't Mitch, and ain't Trump, and ain't Joe, but it's Emmanuel and First Baptist and Second Baptist and Second Presbyterian, that we just have done our job. That we push out the ugly situations and government, you handle them. That these problems are not our problems. We just want to make sure we have a couple of hymns to say. And if we have come together as a church family and felt like service didn't go like we wanted it to go, but didn't complain that we don't have enough unsaved people in the place, I praise God that we baptize today. Won't try to stop and think, when's the last time we used to baptize? Been a minute, ain't it? I ain't even know how to watch this stuff on my floor. I'm like, oh, what's happening here? But I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna get into the message. It should bother us. It should. If you got lost people in your family. It should bother. I was riding, I think it was this morning, I mean yesterday. Um, and there was a guy who I would assume was homeless. He had a target basket that he had a bunch of belongings in, he was pushing it along the road. I was behind him, so I couldn't really get by because he was in the road. My first inclination was irritated that I couldn't get by. Then it arrested my heart. The problem ain't that I can't get by. The problem is what you got got him in the road in the first place. Isn't that the problem? The problem ain't me being delayed from going to pick up some chicken. The problem is that there is a world where a human being is living on the street. His belongings in a cart. His feet marred from the road that he trods, and we are chilling in luxury, complaining about expensive games. So I'm going to introduce a word, and this word is going to be the basis of the message today. Now, I'm not trying to insult anybody, um, but this is not going to be a very familiar word to you. But just trust me, you're a capable hand, I'm going to take care of The word is entropy. You know, say that, say entropy. Entropy. Alright? Entropy. That is E-N-T-R-O-P-Y. Entropy. Y'all ready? Entropy is a physics term that measures the state of disorder in an object. Better said, it measures the thing in a substance that does not work properly. Okay? So if you've heard ever in school about kinetic energy, kinetic energy is the energy in an object that has the potential to move. Entropy is the opposite of that. It's the energy in the object that has no chance for life. In fact, if the entropy in your body gets higher than the possibility of work in your body, you die. Entropy is disorder uncertainty or randomness. It is chaos. Rev, I did not come here for a science lesson. I've been out of school for 40 years. Why are you talking about entropy? Because I believe that each and every person in here 
and each person on this planet are battling in our life to try to stay off the chaos, the uncertainty, the disorder, the aspects in us that just don't seem like it won't work. I want to ask each of you a question. Have you ever started your day with a big to-do list? Like, hey, hey, listen, girl, I can't talk to you there. I got a, I got a thing to do there. I got stuff to do. I got, I got, I got, I got, I got this phone. I got stuff to do. And then when you hang up the phone knowing you got a bunch to do, you can't find the energy to do the bunch you have to do. And then you end up going to bed after watching a thousand TikTok videos with none of your to-do lists done. And then you can't sleep because you know you had so much to do. And then the next day, you still have that same to do list plus the day's activity, and you become paralyzed by progress. Your to do list ends up becoming your overwhelming list that keeps you in a state of injury. You want to work, but can't move. You desire to change, but can't change. You want it better, but you can't get better. And in those moments, I think that we just need just a little bit of help. Just a kickstart. And I think that that's what this lame man needed. The Bible says that this man had been carried to this place daily and placed there because he could not move on his own. They did not carry him to assistance. They carried him to make arms. And I just want to change the sense of it that each and every time we encounter people that our aim is to make the world better. That each and every time we have an opportunity that I want us to pray, but pray that we get better. I want us to sing songs, but make sure we're singing songs to advance God's kingdom. I want us to do everything God has called us to do in order to make the world a better place. The Bible said this man kept begging at the gate, and Peter and John walked up on this man, and the man said, Hey, can you let me hold this up? You know what they said? Uh, y'all y'all have gone into the gas and say, hey, run man, run, run, man, run man. Hey, before, hey, I ain't trying to bother you, but uh, do you have some what? Spare change. And the truth is, we ain't got no spare change. Ain't no dollar I ever got back at five quarters. Ain't no spare in there. We don't need spare change. We need deliberate change. Let me say that again. See, you can't change life with spare. If you put a spare tire on your car right now, what they gonna tell you? Don't ride on this how long? Too long. Because you ain't supposed to function in the spare. We need transformative action, right? And the Bible says that he said to these men of God going to church, I need some spare change. And they said, look at us. We ain't got no change. We got on two years ago church shoes. You know what I'm saying? We don't have nothing. But what we do have is the same God that got us up out of our bed and led us to church. The same God that changed and rearranged and transformed our life long ago. The same God that we're going into this place to worship and praise is able to change your circumstances. I can't give you money, but I can give you a message about a God who can change your circumstances. They look at an ugly situation and gave them a beautiful God. What if you ain't got it in you to change? What if you can't muster up the energy or the mindset to get yourself out of your situation? What if you can't pull yourself off of out of your bootstraps? What if you ain't got no boots? You just need a little help. Can I show y'all something? Y'all know, he says, silver and gold have I done, but that which I have I'll give to you. And he says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and walk. Now, that's powerful in and of itself. I believe that at that moment, that man was healed. But that's not how the story ended. Can I show you something real quick? All right. 
He says, I'm having still to go in verse 6. Verse 7, I want us just to read the first part of verse 7. He had already given him the command that healed his body, right? And then the Bible says, and he took him by the right hand and raised him up. Y'all get it? He had given him a message. The message was powerful. They said, hey man, how much great you know? They took up offering, but the service went over. He reached down. And one version said he grasped hold of the man. That he didn't leave it just in a word message. But he matched his word message with a physical action. He reached down to the man. And the Bible said he helped him to his feet. And all I'm saying in this message, you don't take nothing else away. At the end of the day, the church's job is to help the world to its feet. And I got three things that I think we need to do in order to do that. First off, we need to communicate to people that they can always bring their problems to Jesus. They can always bring their problems to Jesus. Now, sometimes on their journey to Jesus, they stop with us and make sure that we're always taking them to Jesus. It's okay if you want to holler, you know, and this is the I, I got and all the kind of folks. Cool, great. But at the end of the day, make sure your problem is deposited with Jesus. All right? Because they can give advice, but Jesus can transform. Take your issue to Jesus. I'm convinced that some of us don't realize how sick we are. Right? And I got convinced of this because one day Brianna's car broke down on uh, on the Gene Snyder. Car broke down on the Gene Snyder. But I knew that when I got in my car, that my car really wasn't working all that right. It had some, some lights that was on, you know, some things, I don't know what that means. <laughs> that, that ain't my spiritual gift, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it had some stuff going on. But I was driving on my way to rescue my daughter in a car that needed maintenance. I got there, I pulled to the side, and I looked at the car, and I, I, I admittedly, I looked up in the hood and I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> Paul, you get up on your tiptoes and make you look like you know what I do. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's a call right there. So I determined that I couldn't fix it, which I knew before I left the house, but whatever. And then I had Brianna get in the car with me. When she got in the car with me, I turned the key and my car didn't stop. We both ended up having to get our car towed. And that's the picture of how we are living in the world. While we're critiquing other people's behavior, we are sick ourselves. And we have to bring our issue to Jesus. And then that, that we have issues too, that we have pain and struggles and difficulties, and hand our problem into the hand of the master. Second thing that we gotta do is have a belief that our life can get better. A belief that it can get better. Whoever you are, this is not your final the position you're in right now, it ain't it. God has higher for you. You won't always be in pain. You won't always cry at night. You won't always feel overwhelmed. God can make it better. You have to believe that God can make it better. Even though it pains me that this guy went daily to this day again and again and again. There was something in him that believed this day is going to be my day. Today is going to be my day. And I just need to coach people who believe that today is your last 
today feel like you felt yesterday. Today is it. If you're going to be changed today, believe it can be better. Actively seek a solution. But convince yourself that bad moments don't make bad days. Bad days don't make a bad month. Just because you have a bad month don't mean you have a bad life. You got to believe that things can get better. They can get better. They can get better. So Jack, they can get better. Drew, they can get better. They can get better. They can get better. Just don't give up. The last thing, not only do you need to bring your issues to Jesus and believe that things will be better, I think God wants us to be whole. And I think there's behavior of people who are whole. I want you to watch this. The Bible says this man had been begging at the gate. Said he'd been asking Jesus. And I mean all these church folks for help. The Bible says that when he received his healing, he didn't run off into the streets. He didn't go to, to, to the living stone. No. The Bible says he ran into the sanctuary that he had been sitting outside of. It didn't say he hopped out the preacher. It didn't say he gave a letter to the deacons. It didn't say he gave big up to the ushers. It didn't say he joined the choir. Without prompting and without sitting in a chair, without joining the church, he came in praising. <laughs> the Bible says that the new legs that the Lord gave him, he came in the church, jumping, leaping, shouting unto God. And I'm convinced that for whatever reason, we've been convinced that it don't take all that to praise God. And let me correct you. You must not know what God did for us. And when I start thinking about what God did for me, because I used to be blamed. That meant that I was no good and couldn't move forward like I needed to. But then Jesus intersected me. He took me off the road I was on and got me on a new road. And so even when I don't feel like it, when I come into the service, I got to be willing to jump, pray, shout, sing, jump, praise, shout, sing, jump, praise, shout, sing. Why? Because all the things that God has done for me, he looked at my ugly situation, when my ugly attitude, when my ugly demeanor said, I can make it better. Better, better, better. And at 44 years old, it took me four decades to figure out how sick I was. That I had these issues that I had wrapped in religiosity that were so be the day. Things that I refused to face. My heart down trial. Living in hurt that every Sunday, every Wednesday, I hear just so I could be normal in church. I want y'all to look around right now. It ain't a normal person in here. Ain't a normal one to me. This ain't a no one. I don't see not a nary, a normal, <laughs> not a nary one. Could it be that our commonality is our issues? Could it be that what makes us a church is that we brought our ugliness in to worship not beautiful people, but a beautiful God? Could it be that we find that if we start sharing our hurt, maybe somebody else will share theirs too. Right. Like, hey, wait, you going through this? I'm going through this too. And maybe I figured out a way out that I can share with you. I'm about to share something, I'm going to change some of y'all's life. How many of y'all have Apple Watch? Did anybody got Apple Watch? A few people. All right, we've got about six, seven people who got an Apple Watch. There is a calculator on your Apple Watch, okay? If you go to your calculator and enter in a number, 
there is a button that says tip. If you hit the tip button on your calculator on your Apple Watch, it will automatically, based on the percentage you give it, give the tip amount and the total. Come on, shout now, shout now. Somebody, somebody, somebody. I just need a few people to shout with me right now. It transformed my life. You know how next time I'm sitting there with the waitress made up? Like, Hold on, give me a second. Here, one, whatever, two, ten. ten. If you saw the tip percent, ten percent is in What I do with the factorial? I don't know what. What I do with the hashtag? Where I put that in? I done changed your life. I done helped you. Right? See, the days were done. But what if there are others who are derailed by minor issues? Some of which has convinced some folks not to come to church no more. They deal with minor issues that we convinced them so many you can't even come to church. Folks who got wrapped up in stuff that we've been through all our lives. We see dead single mothers won't allow them to come to church. Trying to make a couple of the service and tell their sins while we riding in a filthy car. And it becomes that we only respond to certain issues. And all of us are good. And all of us need Jesus. And while Jesus is standing with arms open wide, the church is like this. Like this is it. Go, go right there. Who want to come to a place with? Like, can y'all walk into a restaurant and... No, oh, man, I'm just... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, come on, baby. Let's go. Let's go somewhere. And listen, everybody's broken. Everybody's warm. All of us. Jesus paid it all. That's all I got. I'm going to finish the sermon with some release. Because I think all of us need to release some things in our lives to live better. First thing that you need to release is you need to release yourself from guilt. Release yourself from guilt. We all the same, we all come short of glory of God. Beat yourself up, ain't no help. Release yourself from guilt. The more you rehearse on the pain of your past, the more difficult it is for you to get better. Release yourself from guilt. Secondly, release yourself from anger. Anger is always a secondary emotion. If you find yourself responding in anger, anger ain't the reason why. There's some hurt behind the anger that causes you to respond in anger. Release yourself from anger. It ain't they fault. Stop fighting them. It ain't they fault. Stop fighting them. It ain't they fault. Stop fighting them. Release yourself from the anger. Release yourself from the burden of normal. You ain't like nobody else. That's the beauty of the God we serve. The God is so awesome in the midst of six billion people. You are unique. And no one's like you. Mark got a twin brother, and they are totally different. They look like they had a little walk the same way, but other than that, <laughs> other than that, they are different people. Now, when you're with them together, sometimes it's weird because they, they, they do similar lives and they have similar movements, and it's a little eerie, make you look a little But even in their identical, or nearly identical twin them, God made them unique. And can I give you another word for unique? Unique means whole, complete. If you're unique, there is none like you, and you are without lack. 
The Bible says that you are uniquely made. Fearfully and wonderfully made means you've been uniquely made. When God made you, He made you complete and whole. Stop letting people try to get you to act like other folks. But God in His best work made you you. The last thing that I'll say. Be released from the burden of what other people think of you. I run down this aisle. Don't, don't make it. I run, I run out of here. Listen. Nobody cares what you think. Say that again. Nobody cares. Do your best to please God in your actions. Pleasing folks is just a happy, you know, if it happens, cool. If it don't, do your best to please God. I got news for you. They will never appreciate you at the level you need. I love you. And I'd love to be able to express to you the actual level of my love and care for you. I'll try, but it still won't, won't be in full. Elaine, I love you. And though I give you a hard time on a workload, I appreciate you. And I can go around this room because I've had the awesome opportunity to pastor an amazing people for 16 years. And if there's one thing that I've always struggled with, it's how to articulate how appreciative I am of you let me be your pastor. I've probably done some, 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 some stuff that could have got me up out of here a long time ago. But you still call me pastor and I say thank you. But listen, I've convinced myself that the best pastor for Emmanuel is one who's only concerned with what God wants for me. And if I leave with that, wrapped in compassion and love for people, it will always end up okay. That's what I'm working on. I ask for your prayers while I'm Amen. Amen. Your task is to do exactly what God has called you to do. Each and every person in here, God has a desire for you. Be whole, and it's unique, individually you, and walk in that, and be free to be everything God has called you to do. Amen. Amen. I'm going to pray for you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. God, we admit we came in birth. We don't want to leave out the same way. So during this prayer, God, we want to hand over our birth to you. Say, God, have your own way. Thank you for giving us the strength and the courage to work for you, to give our lives to you. God, we don't take any moment for granted. You've been good to us, and to that we say thank you. For any in the room who don't know you, the part of their sins, who haven't given their life to Christ, first God, communicate to them that you want them, and that they need you. God, you're standing there with wide, wide arms open, say come. Come and I'll give you rest. Come if you're burdened and I'll take away the burden. Come if you're yoked up and I'll break the yoke. Come. God, I pray that we, your people, unfold our arms and open up our arms real wide to receive whoever you send. God, we'll be here for giving you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen.
transition to our time of the Lord's Supper. Uh, you should have in the pews in front of you uh, elements. You don't mind grabbing that now as we transition to, through this time. You heard I say that everybody got the elements. Everybody but me. I need, I need some. Sorry. And I left that over there. I'm sorry. The deacon has told me like six times that I need to get it over there. But I'm sorry. Does everybody have communion? Y'all have it in the balcony? Everybody good up there? All right. One of the two ordinances we observe here in Emmanuel Baptist Church, the first being the Lord's, first being baptism, excuse me, the uh, second being the Lord's Supper. We do this, the Bible says, in remembrance of Him. Uh, we do it to remember that Jesus Christ lived a blameless life and was crucified on behalf of us. Uh, he suffered, led, and died for our sins. And we do this every first Sunday to remember what Jesus had done. You need one? Uh, Jack, can you take the communion up to the balcony? A gentleman's coming down. It's so smooth. And then I just spilled it everywhere. Jesus. Thank you, Jack. Yeah. 